I pay for a number one. Oh yeah. What? What does a number one cost? Okay. What does a number one song in America cost? The reality is this: you do have to have a real fan base to a certain extent, and your song has to actually be moving around organically. Once it's that, they'll push the button on it. It's a campaign. It this could be might... like it's like a twelve-week campaign, and it might be sixty grand, seventy grand, whatever it is. That's it. And it's oh yeah, that's seventy way. grand. The ROI is crazy because that yeah. seventy grand might bring you back two hundred, three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. This is why Russ is one of my favorite just musicians in the industry as far as me growing up because the priceless gems that this man drops consistently throughout the course of his music career is insane because even along with that he had a difficult time with the media because of the perception of him being too arrogant, which of course was definitely brought on by himself a lot when it came to him wanting recognition for his ability to create the beat, the rhyme scheme. At one point, everybody started making jokes like, oh, he created the mic, he created the studio that he was in, you know, things of that nature because of the amount of credit that he wanted when it came to him just being an overall producer of music so now fast forward with him having one of the more successful careers that i've seen as far as somebody actually using the words and then their actions backing it up because if you don't know russ is the first solo rapper to perform at the pyramids in egypt all the way back in october 25th 2022 and if you don't think that's a feat then just as Kanye West and Travis Scott, what happened when they tried to perform at the pyramids in Egypt. <laughs> so anyways, um, biggest thing I wanted to get into, Russ just dropped a new track titled Best Friend featuring somebody that he's taken on tour who is Melly. And I think I have the tour right here. Yeah, okay. So the tour right here from May 31st all the way to uh from may 31st all the way to june 28th i think that's what it says yeah so it's not the longest of tours but of course it is a tour nonetheless with black and melly and i just gotta say having those two artists on tour is interesting because the amount of quality from black from russ from melly I think they will give a unique performance that the fans will probably enjoy as far as in totality. So to bring those two artists on tour with you is very interesting because, you know, Black is more R&B, not saying Melly isn't, but, you know, she could switch it up a little bit. Russ could switch it up a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's very interesting lineup that he has for this tour. But anyways, so um, some of the other things I wanted to get into is... I think it was the working on me track. One of the things I love to do as a podcaster is to show the people who support the numbers and just how much the support is helping as, as a podcaster, your numbers aren't really public knowledge. It's not like YouTube where you can see the views and things of that nature. You kind of have to screenshot and basically post it for people to see the specific numbers of what you do. Um, when it comes to put, uh, statistically and analytically speaking. So for Russ, this specific track, Working On Me, as you can see, has done over 3 million streams and uh, all-time streams for this release. And then, of course, he has more numbers right here. And he's just showing you screenshots because obviously it's harder to get certain numbers whenever you're independent. Because if you don't know, Russ is completely independent. If you're wondering why he hasn't put out a project in so long and why he's just putting out tracks 24-7, it's simply because of him being independent. And I take that back. He put out a project back in 2023, which was his 16th studio album, Santiago, which de uh, debuted number 12th on the Billboard 200, which a lot of people would get clowned for debuting that low for your first week sales. But like I said, this man is independent. And 
majority if not all of the sales is going directly to him and the reason why i say majority and not all is because he still has a team and a manager that he probably pays for and things of that nature but as far as a major label distribution deal this man is seemingly completely independent so that's why nobody really clowned him about the numbers because they see him going on tour um at the pyramids and being able to sell out um all right look at this um actually i don't know if i'm gonna have the video version but anyways he has a lot of people in the crowd when he goes to perform so obviously it's real as far as his core fan base so uh he put up a, a screenshot of his stats basically saying working on me is number 15 on the velocity chart number 50 is on addiction chart 54 on genius chart uh four on genius r&b chart 50, 49 in usa shazam chart basically as an independent artist I would say it's more difficult. It's not impossible, but it's more difficult to get playlisting simply for the fact that they don't want to promote somebody that's not under a major label because of how major labels allegedly compensate them for playlisting their uh the artists. Let's just put it like that. And then another obstacle that Russ had to overcome being an independent is basically him accusing billboard and luminate of taking away 10,000 sales of his album santiago claiming the charts are inflated by fake data and then russ you know combated that by basically saying watching the general public try to figure out why certain streams don't match the ticket sales is funny basically you know poking fun at the fact that they want to say his uh streaming numbers are fake but not uh his his real live performances because obviously you can't fake butts and seats you know people coming out making plans to come out to see your performance you know so anyways yeah that, that was the whole back and forth with billboard and luminate basically saying uh they took away four thousand of his real sales ten thousand of uh, uh overall sales I think that was talking about like digital. Uh so basically like yeah, so four thousand that's like copies as far as like people buying and downloading and then total ten thousand. So, you know, six thousand as far as accumulatively uh accumulative digital sales equaling um total purchases as major labels were saying that he was faking his streams and sales due to monopoly monopolistic merch bundles and they said he basically said in parentheses only major labels are allowed to do merch bundles because the only approved vendor is a major label vendor and he said these numbers and charts are made up the impact however is not shout out to the fans which is definitely potent to uh pinpoint because russ is one of those type of artists which i've been intrigued by just simply off of the fact that what he says is manifestation but also a lot of work put in behind the scenes to come up with this uh outcome so he went on to say i don't think y'all realize how nuts this is billboard charts are inflated by fake data which is being verified by only one company luminate both billboard and luminate are owned by the same company anyways I must sit back and watch Milan expose the whole um, expletive. So basically, Milan is like some type of industry insider, I believe. And then Milan said the current music charts are inflated by fake data, and that data is being verified by one company only. This, that same company that verifies the data is owned by the same company that owns the charts. It's a rigged game, which honestly, Covering the music industry, I consistently say if you're an independent artist, I'm not saying you can never make it because obviously there's ways to get organic attraction through social media and DSPs exposure. But as far as making the charts, as far as garnering the masses and gaining the masses on a level of a major label artist, it's never going to happen. You would need... Uh, distribution deal a licensing deal to even come close to any major label artist or 
artists who's on a distribution deal you just can't be a hundred percent independent and compete with those artists now if you're okay with just having a you know a livable wage for making music then that's one thing but if you want to compete with the big dogs in the industry you unfortunately have to sign to the major labels because they are the ones that opens those imaginary doors when it comes to people talking about the illuminati it's not the illuminati it's just people in certain positions to open the door for you but it's not like oh we're the illuminati no like steve stout uh lucian grange i mean there's people you can look up it's not just some mysterious people you know what i'm saying uh but anyways so yeah at the end of the day that's why i really enjoy just russ's whole career because he actually walks what he talks and he's not one that just talks about woe is me he puts in the work and i think he's like an underground drake he's like if drake completely went independent and just put out music for his fan base to consume and just live with the results because russ could easily sign to a major label but he continues to stay independent stay putting in the work the grind i mean i think one of the reasons why this tour is so short right here because you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten you have ten dates i think that's short compared to most major label artists and it's simply because i don't think he's fighting the battle of return on investment i think he's basically going on tour for the love of the sport and the love of getting in front of his fans and showing them appreciation for showing up time and time again so that being said that's basically it you know a new track by russ and melly titled what's this titled again best friend and you know this is produced by boy wonder so you already know the production is crazy um once again black and melly is going on tour starting may 31st if you was wanting to get your tickets and the biggest thing you need to know is that the tour will be ending june 28th in brooklyn and what else Fans are speculating that dates will be added, but obviously only the future will tell. So, yeah. So, with that being said, click my link tree in my bio. Let me know on one of my social medias. What do you think about Russ as a musician, as a person, as just an overall gem dropper in the music industry and pulling back the veil as far as the smoke and mirrors that goes on when regarding the music industry? And what is your favorite track from Russ?